Lino's the maestro, of course, and I have a tremendous amount of respect mm -hmm. for him. Career-wise, it's a huge thing to have Lino working with you on your work. That cannot be understated how big of a deal that is. Um, however, I'm also working with my friend. No, it's exactly like this, but a little bit curving, a little bit more, mm -hmm. like a wave. You know? I was thinking about our conversation the other day when you were talking about the work being graphic. And how I was thinking literally that uh, you were talking about graphics like lines and cane work and, and you said no, the work is graphic without having that. And uh, I started thinking differently about it because it really is, you know, the cuts and the, the lines. and A lot of times we agree on things aesthetically. If we talk mm -hmm. about things and we agree about the philosophies behind yeah certain things aesthetically and sculpturally even though our work is totally different yeah. we still uh, we kind of gel that way uh, we have uh, probably two way to express in ourselves but we spoke the same language what it means uh, we eat the same soup what it means okay. He cook one way, I cook a different way, but we talk, we know what we like. Mentally, what I really want to do is stick with my self-imposed architecture, okay? So the question is, why am I imposing this on myself? And stepping outside of that might help bring the answer, which is going to lead to growth. So. That more than anything is really what's important about today and what's, you know, what happens when you can take the journey with friends. You know what I think I've been doing wrong? Squeezing? I'm squeezing too hard on the first, the first one and, and marking the glass. I was Stop. talking with Lino specifically Flip. about wanting to make some kind of longer pieces that were flattened a bit and how to assemble them and um, there was something technically about that that I was having problems with like making that section really nice okay you look at Lino's work and you see some of the flattened forms that he makes and how beautiful and perfect those forms are and what one doesn't realize is how incredibly difficult it is to actually squeeze the glass and make it look nice so it kind of started with the conversation about just that one simple technique and even though I worked with him for so long and saw him do it thousands of times yeah. maybe hundreds of times for sure yeah, um, we do it. yeah how do you that doesn't necessarily translate into your hands Ew. really uh, the challenge for me and this whole process, as Lino can attest to this, is I take my time. I work on my own, my own timeline and my own schedule, and sometimes that schedule moves a little slower. And uh, uh, so to come down to the museum and work with Lino and um, let go of all of my expectations and let go of the things that I have in mind that I want to make is, it's good, it's very challenging. Okay. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain, for sure. No pain, no gain. You must have suffered. You don't know why you try, why you needed to try. If you're making work in an honest way, you really care about what you're making and you really care about the pieces and you really care about how the day goes and how everybody's working together. So they cross it. Oh. Okay. So one in the side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The glass is a very wonderful material. They take a time. And then you need to duplicate a lot of energy. And then what do you to do? You know, able to do today. Maybe to do tomorrow is wonderful. And tomorrow you discover it's the best way to do. You, know, you never know. 
This technique is totally a, a Leno thing of doing multiple and combo and switching the axis. Um, and really, this is something that for me, without working with Leno in the shop, would be kind of a hands-off technique. Uh, and part of that is because I think, you know, it's important for me to come to things based on my own volition in a way. Yeah, we're looking good. And I don't want to just use Lino's techniques for the sake of using it in my work. But if he's here doing it, it's kind of, that's cool. I'll do it then. Yeah. But it fits. Well, it does fit. I mean, however, just because the shoe fits, it doesn't mean you should wear it. Yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes maybe you need to go and find your own pair of shoes. Right. However, right. if he wants me to borrow his shoes, I'm happy to step into them. I mean, he does have nice shoes. He's got some nice shoes. Okay. The colors that Lino usually uses, he makes himself. So the tendency of on um, these this style of commercially available colors for it to boil a little bit at the seams because of the lead content in the glass. So this one looks pretty good, but if after today we kind of continue this course of work, we're going to have to hit Lino up to give us some color, which hopefully he'll do. Any color you want, I give the color you want. monumental day for me. I mean, it's, I, I'm not going to get too cheesy about this, we're friends, yeah, but. It is an honor to have you come down and help me work through some new ideas and make some things. You know, it's a many, many reasons for doing this. I think because of why the curiosity, humbleness, uh, uh, because I feel it's a very good for me to be humble, not be too much proud of what I'm doing and uh, to see what somebody else is doing. I think it's a great opportunity, it's very good. He's at the boss. He's uh, finally. Yeah, he's a super <laughs> little boss, and they decide what they want to do. You have a good taste, fantasy, skill. Today we are just a breakfast. Today that's all. No big deal. Yeah, back to work. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate your time. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Lino. Guys. Thank you. Let's look out the window. We jump. We have the parachute.